that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to be checking out Mob Town from Fifth Street Games. This is for two to four players, ages eight and up. It'll take about 30 to 45 minutes to play. And in Mob Town, you will be, uh, well, you'll be controlling different areas using various different animals to take over pool halls and theaters and factories and all courts sorts of various different things. The game currently is on Kickstarter right now. Very first date. It's doing very well. Partially because it's free international shipping, which always boggles my mind how they get that done. But anyway, let's open it up and see how Mob Town plays. Alright, so let's take a look at what you're going to get inside of Mob Town. As I always like to mention, this is the promotional copy of the game I got in front of me. The copy that you're going to get is going to be much nicer and much more shiny. Uh, but first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule booklet. It is very, very short because the game is a very simple game to learn and to teach. The rule booklet does a perfectly adequate job of showing you exactly how to play, holding your hand and getting you right into the game thumbs up on that. First thing I want to show you and then get rid of it is your score tracker. This is where you're going to be keeping track of your score. In this game, obviously, you're going to try and get the most points. How you're going to be doing that is you're going to be keeping track of the points you earn during the rounds because you're going to be playing three rounds in Mob Town, and this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so, next... I've got the game set up to uh, to where you'd be starting off, and I'm just going to show you exactly what all is going on here, because it looks like it's a lot of clutter, but trust me, it's actually really, really simple. First thing I want to point out are these cards right here. These are your agenda cards. You're gonna Each person is going to have their own color, and they are going to choose two agendas at the beginning of the game uh, once the whole city is set up. So these might be to have the most longest connection, or the most factories, or the most theater, or most theater points, most majority, or have the majority of the city, so on and so forth. You're going to select two of these things. Now, don't worry if you select two and then you think, oh, crap, I'm not going to be able to get them. You can switch out the agendas, which I kind of like. You know, it's not too punishing in that aspect. So those are your agendas, and as you can tell, you're also going to get ships based on what color you are. These are going what you're going to do to control the city. Uh, so essentially, well, let's just go into the city. The city is going to be laid out in front of you. Now, I laid this one out, but it's really unique how it works. So essentially, we'll just set it out real quick, is that what you're going to do is you're going to take the top 12 cards of the gray deck, and this is going to be the city. You're going to flip it over, and then, so this one has a downward arrow. So you're going to put that there, and then the next card is going to go downward. And then the next card is going to go uh, where, that, where that arrow is pointed and so on and so forth. So every single time, the board is going to be drastically different based on how the cards play out. Which is really cool, and I really do like that. But uh, let's go over a sample card so you can see how it, so it works. So this is a theater. Uh, it is worth four victory points at the end if you can successfully capture it. And also... Uh, it's going to cost you four to do this. Now, four for what, you say? Well, you're going to need four foxes or four weasels, or two weasels, two foxes, any combination of four of the foxes and weasels in order to successfully capture this part of the city. And if you do, you put your little marker on it. So that's pretty simple. Now, let's say somebody else says, oh, I want that. Well, they can take it back from you, but they're going to have to pay an additional one. So essentially, if the green guy wanted to take over, he'd have to pay the four plus the one, he'd have to pay five, then boom, he could capture it, then six, so on and so forth. Um, now, you're saying, all right, you got these, that's what you're going to be paying for. What you're going to do is you're going to start with five cards in your hand, and they all have various different animals on it. They got the sharks, the foxes, the weasels, the snakes, and I think I might be forgetting one. Uh, but you're going to be using these to purchase things. In addition, you're going to have all these cards over here that you can pick up, a la kind of like a ticket to ride. Now let's go over real quick the actions you can take on your turn, and they are all on these handy dandy cheat sheets, which is really, really nice. I love when companies do this. It really speeds along the game. You can draw two cards from the top of this deck. You can trade in one of your cards to take one of any type. So essentially, if you traded in, say, this, this one snake, you could pick up both these foxes, which would be pretty helpful if you needed foxes. Uh, you can cash in, you can discard uh, your cash, which is kind of like a wild card, and it lets you use it as a wild card. You can take any three from the lineup, which is what these ones are called, or you can take over a city, which I showed you earlier, which is doing that. Uh, the next thing you can do is called an open lot. Now, you might notice this thing over here. This is technically not part of the city right now. These three things, the theater, the gambling hall, and the factory. How this works is you're going to have 
three briefcases throughout the game. Now, these are very important briefcases. You only get three during all three rounds, so you want to spend them wisely. How this works is, if there's a card over here that you really want, so I say, I want this, really want this theater, what I will do on my turn is, I can use this briefcase, spend it, and I can put the theater anywhere out on the board I would like. Now, normally, how this works is, if I were here, I would pay three to go here. But, if I wanted to go down here, so let's pretend I have connection here and here. If I wanted to go here, I could pay four. But if I want to go here, I would have to pay three. Now you're saying, Forrest, Forrest, what, that says a two. No, if it's one space away, and that's not your space, you have to pay one additional. If it's two spaces away, you have to pay two additional. So essentially, uh, what this lets you do is just open up a new part of the city. So let's just say I'm all down here, and I want to get up here. I can open up this lot right here and pay only three. So as soon as you get that out there, you can immediately pay for it, and it is yours. Uh, and then you're going to replenish the open lot and keep on moving. The last action you can take is you're going to swap your agendas. As I mentioned, the game is forgiving in that aspect, where you're not stuck with you know uh, hotels, even though you're clearly getting blasted on hotels. You can always swap out your agendas. Uh, so. The last thing I want to mention is how does the round end? The round ends when you come to this card right here, which is called the Law. Now, when you first start out the game, each player is going to get five cards, which are part of the lineup cards, and then you're going to take the Law card and put it in the bottom ten cards on the deck. Once you get to that card, uh, the round is over. You tally up your points by seeing who got their agendas and how many points you collected on all your various different things. You move your points on the score tracker, you rinse, wash, and repeat for two more rounds, and at the end of three rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner of Mob Town. Alrighty then, Mob Town from Fifth Street Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. The artwork might not do it for you. I personally liked how my wife was not the biggest fan. It's all going to be about your personal style with that. Uh, next, two players is okay. However, three and four players is really where I think this game makes its money. Two players, it's just, you know, uh, you got the cards where you're trying to complete objectives. And if you have two players, you really can complete your objectives pretty easily. However, with three and four player games, it really can be quite challenging. And that can be the swing in the game, those points. Uh, the last thing that might not be for everybody is that it is it is light strategy. This game is definitely light strategy. I consider this a family game, so there's not too much meaty strategy here. You know, you're not going to be sitting there thinking for like an hour about what your move is. Moving on to the pros, though, I really did enjoy Mob Town, and I'll tell you why. I mentioned family game, and this really fits that bill. It's very easy to teach. It's very easy to learn. It's very easy to set up. It is a fantastic family game in that 45-minute range. You got your ticket to ride your dicks and sort of get games like that that you can teach to an eight-year-old and they'll have no problem playing this game really fits that bill i also liked the art i mentioned that earlier i liked it what they really noticed that stood out is that they took the time you got all these different cards laid out and they made different names for different places and you get a little chuckle here and that of that sort of thing and i really did like it the last thing that might sway you is free international shipping i gotta mention it again i don't know how they do it me being a game creator myself it personally amazes me but if you're interested in Mob Town, be sure to check out the Kickstarter link below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Mob Town. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.